بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد While we have this chance and opportunity we need to utilize our time properly to maximize for akhirat Shaitan, nafs and environment constantly is there to make effort to distract insan from the objective Even when Nuh alayhi salam was on the ship لما ركب نوه رأى فيها شيخا نوع عليه السلام سيد very old man on the ship لم يعرفه we didn't recognize him فقال له نوه ما دخلك so نوع عليه السلام asked him that what are you doing here who are you so that was إبليس شيطان he said دخلت لأصيب قلوب أصحابك I have come here to take control of the hearts of the inmates of the ship to take control of your content your, your companions and he gave detail just one sentence فتكون قلوبهم معي وأبدانهم معك so that their hearts will be with me and their bodies will be with you so when a person is doing an amal as a routine, as a formality, then literally their heart is not engrossed in that action. Their the heart, when you say your heart and soul, when a person is involved in something completely, then there's a difference. Why? Because he is taken that thing seriously. That's why Mawlai Elias when he said, that the ruh and the haqiqat of deen will be gone he explained in detail to say in every shaba of deen we will find the ruh the spirituality gone and it will just become a routine a rasam a custom in the line of ilm and knowledge you will have madaris you will have darul ulums you will have students studying quran and hadith they will pass at six years, they will pass their time. But there won't be one change in their life. Why? Because it's just become a formality, it's just a routine. They'll be studying the kitabs, they will be studying ayat of Jannah, ayat of Jahannam. But it will not affect their lives, it will not change them. So in the line of ilm, which is a source of hidayat, jumud, there will be a laxity that will come in that shawba, that department, and it will be due to this routine. Likewise in Khanka, in Tazkia, in spiritual reformation, people will go to the Sheikh, they will make the dhikr of the Sheikh, the bayan will be a routine just for finding nuktas, very special points, etc. The dhikr will be just a routine. But they won't live with hidayat. It's just a formality. Likewise in Tabligh, the amal of tabligh will just become a routine. Go for your gush, do your out gush, do your talim. All the amal, which was the asbab and the means of hidayat, now hidayat is snatched. And it's just become a formality. So he said even up to doing dini amal is a routine. He said in some countries, the Islamic gab, in some areas where Muslims wear Islamic clothing, it's not because they want to wear it because of Islam, but it is because it is a routine, it's a formality in that country. Some areas, tribal areas, women are particular about hijab, but the hijab they're wearing is not because of Sharia, because of deen, because it is the Amr of Allah, because my Allah will be happy with me in this condition, but more so because it has just become a routine, a system, a structure, a heritage, something which is part of that system. And there's no reality. And let us think about our own everyday examples. Think of one hobby, one passion, one, one thing which you like and you enjoy. And try to do that as for the sake of formality. Let's say somebody loves a sport, tennis. So just hit the ball to the other person, hit the ball, that's all. Let's just finish the game, let's finish it quickly. You win me, I win me, and game over, and let's go. Or is there an objective, is there a target, is there a preparation before the match? What skill do I need to have? What acumen do I need to have to beat my opponent? So first a person has a effort before the effort. 
So in Salat we got Nawafil before that. It's preparation for a preparation. Secondly, they have a goal. Why? What's my target? What do I want to achieve? What's the objective? If it's a tournament, I, I, I need to climb up the ladder. Secondly, it's a challenge. There's an opponent. We've got nafs, we've got shaitan, we've got the mahal, we've got the environment, we got all these factors that are challenging us all the time. Number three, there's ranking structures. Okay, you rank first in the world, second. What am I ranked in the eyes of Allah? This amal that am I doing? How am I ranked? This amal itself and personally my whole life. What am I ranked? If today in the world there's so many billion people and I'm ranked amongst the people of Iman, from the people of Iman, what am I ranked? And my salah that I read today, what's my ranking? My tilawat, I made so much tilawat, what's my ranking? If not now, then from the way salam down till today, how many people of Iman have passed? What's my ranking as an Ummah? I need to be avarous, I need to be desirous, I need to have this yearning, this fikr, this concern. And number four, a person who has a hobby, there's a passion behind it. There's a, you don't need targhib, you don't need uh, motivation to prompt you to do that action. No, it comes naturally because there's an internal passion, there's a flame. Otherwise, if it's just for formality, for example, eating. If we had to do eating as a formality, just gather the amount of vitamins that you need, take 10, 20 vitamin tablets, finish chuti. So your breakfast, vitamins, lunch, vitamins, supper, vitamins, live your whole life like that. But if you go to a connoisseur, somebody who is an expert, then from the last ingredient, if they choose, we're going to use olive oil, that's just one of the ingredients. But we'll use the olive oil from this country, whose officer at this time, which is hand-picked, which is cold-pressed, which is, there's details behind it. So a normal bottle, which will cost you, 50 rand will cost you a thousand rand, two thousand rand, five thousand rands for the connoisseur, for somebody who is an expert. Forget the entire meal. Then, when the meal is prepared with the various ingredients, then the tasting, how do you enjoy it? How do you, you, do you take the pleasure out of it? It's not just get it over. Let's eat quickly. Let's put it down our throat. No. There's an, there's an effort. There's, there's an environment. There's a mahal. There's... There's various factors which, which makes a thing complete. So if I have to be resurrected before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah, from Adam alayhi salam till Qiyamah, what's my ranking? Online gamers, sportsmen, everybody worries about their ranking, top 10. He's in the top 100 list. Where am I in the list? Where do I fit? But a person who's just doing the amal of deen, and let's, let's not get this misunderstanding that it's only amal. No, sleeping is an amal. A person who sleeps with the sunnah way, if you sleep eight hours a day, means for every person of 60 years, 20 years of his life, he slept. You slept the sunnah way, it's anybody. You read Isha and Fajr uh, with the Jama'ah, you get reward of the entire night of Ibadah. And if you did, and this in. Uh, 60 years of life, 20 years, let's say we got 20 only also, 20 years of Laylul Qadr, you got it with Ibadat, times it by a thousand months, 83 years. So my sleeping is not just sleeping, it's in Ibadat, it is an Amal, a believer moves from one Amal to another Amal, relieving oneself is an Amal, it can be a means to go close to Allah. So when we say Amal, we don't mean ibadat. Ibadat is a fraction and, and a, a, a constituent of amal of deen. But deen is our 24 hour day. Our prior, pious predecessors, where, where did they excel and where were they looking at their ranking? Dawutai Rahtlali would uh, put the crumbs uh, and bread in water. He would soak it. So he found that if he had to eat it normal and eat it wet, moist, he would read more 50 ayat of the Quran. So he stopped eating dry bread. As a Siri Sakti Rahmatullah 
They say for 98 years of his life, nobody ever seen him sleeping or lying down on a bed. He was never seen. There's no eyewitness in his entire life's history, obviously from after Bulu, that he was seen lying on his bed. What was his mamul? He said, tonight is a night of ruku, spend the night of ruku. Tonight is a night of sajda, spend the night in sajda. As Abu Bakr bin Ayyas, rahimahullah, they say for 40 years he did not go to bed. And when he was passing away, he told his son some advices. He said, stay away from guna completely, but be very particular about this room here. Because in this very room, I made 12,000 khatams. In this very room, I made 12,000 khatams of the entire Quran. So when a person is doing the amal, then they give importance, they give priority. So, I'm not doing this amal only for jinn. If, if Allah hadn't created Jannah or Jahannam, it was sufficient. That my Allah will be happy. I'm doing it for my Allah. The bonus is Jannah. The bonus is no punishment. Those are just fringe benefits. But the target, the ambition, the focus, the goal, the challenge, is how can I do this amal so my Allah will be happy? And when a person has love for something, then there's no need for a motor. The story of Layla and Majnun is quite famous and he's Ashar. And it's a true story. Historians have written about his beloved Layla Al Amiriya and his name was Space. When they were young, they fell in love. Uh, he was so madly in love with her that people called him Majnun insane. Crazy, a possessed person, a person is possessed with a gene because his actions were abnormal. When a person's obsessed with Allah and Deen, then people can call you crazy, no problem. You're spending so much time with Quran, you're making so much zikr, you got no time for anything else. You're ignoring this, ignoring this, no problem. People will call a person possessed. Udhukurullah, make so much zikr of Allah, make so much doubt of Allah, make so much tilawat of Allah, make so much salat of Allah. That people will call you majnoon. We've been told to do this. That's an accolade. Then nowadays, an accolade is when a person is so mad in dunya, you say you're mad. For example, somebody is a wild driver, a reckless driver, and he takes chances. He says he's mad. Means he's, he's so passionate, he's taken it to such a level that he's into it completely. Has anybody ever said, I'm mad for Dean? Did it ever happen by mistake one day? A person was cooking and forgot, okay, this year. A person was watching something haram, they forgot. They were on the internet, they were on the PlayStation, whatever it is. All those things overwhelmed our deen. Hey, I didn't see the time, I didn't know what was happening. Did it ever happen one day that my deen overwhelmed my dunya? I was so busy until I would have forgot to eat. I was so busy in Salat, I forgot to sleep, I forgot to sleep. Did our deen overwhelm our dunya anytime? Our dunya is overwhelming our deen. As a Sahil bin Amr, when he heard the riwayat that a person in a path of Allah for a short while, it's better than doing ibadat your entire life at home. When he heard this, he said, he was in the path of Allah, I won't go home. So this one hadith was sufficient that the Sabi, he passed away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, radiyallahu anhu. But one hadith was sufficient that he didn't go home ever. As Abu Ayyub Ansari, an elderly Sabi who partook in most of the battles, one ayat, in Firu Khifafu wa Thiqala, when his even children encourage him, Oh Father, stay at home. You don't need to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You made jihad in all the battles, you made all the sacrifices it was needed to make, you've done what needed to be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Now there's no need. He said, one eye of the Quran doesn't allow me. And he made wasiyat wherever the Jamaat reaches. He's buried in Istanbul, in Turkey, in those days, Constantinople. That when I die, carry my janazah, my body till there where the Jamaat goes. So I can tell Allah, Jahadtu fi sabilika hayyan wa mayyitan. Ya Allah, I strove in your path alive and when I was dead. 
When I'm alive, when I'm dead, I want to obey Allah. So when they were dead, you want to obey, uh, obey Allah. When we are alive, are we obeying Allah? When they were dead, Fatima requested that, that Ghilaf be put over the qabr when she's been placed. So no man sees, not a sitter, nothing. Just know the shape of her body. So she wanted to make hijab while she was dead. So that just by the desire. When a person is very apt and they cry, they're in tears because you're so happy. And sometimes ecstasy, your heart will burst. What, what ecstasy, what, what thrill, what shock, what passion do I have? One story of a, a lady who won a big prize. So they had a special department psychologist who would decide how do we break the news. They went to the family, discussed with the family that how do we break the news about uh, her winning such a great prize. So they said the doctor, the family doctors had a very good relationship with her a long time. So he'll break the news with her. So he came to her, he was talking to her gentleman. He said, by the way, you fought so, won so many million dollars. What would you do? She said, I'll give you half. Because their concern was that she's an old lady, elderly lady. If we break the news, we don't know how she'll handle it. In just in joke, the doctor mentioned it, by the way, if you were to win this amount, what would you do? She said, I'll give you half. They said, the doctor got a heart attack. He died. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of doing the amal, how it should be done. Today, the virtue is reading 12 rakats of salat, which is sunnati and mu'akada. Ma min abdin muslim in yusalli lillahi ta'ala fi kulli yawmin. Any person who reads 12 rakats, غير فريضة إلا بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for you a house in Jannah for that individual who reads it's two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, after Maghrib, two after Isha, two. These are called the 12 Sunan Mu'akkada. Under no circumstance should I ever miss this Sunan Mu'akkada. And more emphasize is this Rakata al Fajr khairun min al dunya wa ma fiha. The two rakats before Fajr and the Sayyid Ulama say even if Salat of the Jamaat has started, we should complain it. Completed is the two rakats of Salah before Fajr. It is better than the entire dunya and whatever it contains. And the dua for today is, A'udhu Billahi Sameel Alim Min Shaytan Ar-Rajim. A'udhu Billahi Sameel Alim Min Shaytan Ar-Rajim. And the three last ayat of Surah Hashr. Which is Wallahu Alladhi La Ilaha Illa Hu Alimu Al Ghaibi Wa Shahadati Huwa Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Ila Akhiri Whoever reads these ayat and the dua three times morning and evening Wakkal Allahu Bihi Sab'een Alfa Malak Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala deputes Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala appoints 70,000 farishtas Yusalluna Alayhi they will make a dua for this person. They will seek forgiveness for this person. Hatta yumsi, till the evening. Likewise, he will do it in the evening. Wa imata fi dhalika al-yawmi mata shahidan. And if he pass away the day he dies, the death of a shaheed. Other commentators to say, he will die with the ajar of what a shaheed, the reward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. He will get that reward. Wa akhiru da'wana. أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ